Well, for years, some of America's most respected and prestigious schools have employed radical professors, some of whom have even attacked America. From domestic terrorist Bill Ayers to his wife Bernadine Dorn, who was once on the FBI's most wanted list, and fellow members of their weather underground like Kathy Wilkerson and Kathy Boudin. Boudin spent 20 years in prison for killing a cop. To folks who are self described anarchists, these are some of the people molding the minds of students across this nation. Teachers like these are rare, rarely challenged in public. Until tonight, as we bring you night two of my exclusive interview with former professor. Ward Churchill. Will you apologize to no, anyone? I will not apologize. When I hear an apology for the half million odd Iraqi children, then I'll take it under consideration. As to the American children who were killed, I mourn them. I mourn them proportionally, just as much as I mourn any given one of those Iraqi children. Proportionately, that's interesting. You spent your life working for the government you hate. A little hypocritical? I used it for the exact purpose that you're hearing now, which is try to explain things. That was the job. How about ISIS? Are they evil? Sure, they are. Do you think that they're they, not Christian, so I brave? can't really speak for Islam in terms of the concept of evil. But but you describe the Al Qaeda terrorists as brave. Do you do you believe that ISIS terrorists are brave? Let me try this one more time and see if you get it this time. I was writing in directly the voice of a Pentagon briefer, only I'm running the record in reverse. Now, I don't I'm know exactly you, how you want ISIS me to take brave? responsibility for what brave? I did more than state courageous? exactly what it was I did. I was asking you the question. Do you believe ISIS is brave and courageous and restrained? As brave and courageous and restrained as any of the American forces that are described as brave, courageous, Can you answer and yes restrained. Or no? Exactly the same. I don't find either of them especially redeeming. You don't find me joining a particular formation, a fundamentalist formation. I'm not especially in thrall with fundamentalism of any sort. So we have no moral high ground when it comes to America versus ISIS. I've seen American moral high ground at work in Southeast Asia, thank you very much. And the answer to that would be a Absolute no. Okay, we don't. So we don't. What should we do? Should we let them just commit these atrocities with impunity? Should we let them go on beheading Christians, beheading children, committing uh, crucifixions? I have heard one good women. suggestion on this of what we could do to maybe alleviate the situation would be stop killing their babies. Okay, so it's back on us. If we want ISIS to stop sure. killing Christians, take some responsibility, as you put it, well, and all the rest of it. How should we take it. that, Professor? Should we let them come to here to the homeland? Or do we get to defend ourselves if they try to bomb us? Whose homeland is this? Is it yours, sir? Are we back on that again? I don't know. Is it? You tell me, Professor. How did this get to be this homeland? Okay, so we're back to that. The genocide against Native Americans justifies every bad thing that ever happens no, to the United States. No, that's a question. Ever after. Is I'm that not your quite position? sure that you're putting words in my mouth would necessarily be an answer to the question. But how exactly did this homeland come to be the homeland? Why do you live here? If you hate America so much, why have you chosen to stay here? It's my country. It's also my homeland. But why stay if you hate I heard it? you sort of scoff and dismiss the genocide of American Indians. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. No, I know, we're, I know, we're I know at that. And you're the one that was just like scoffing at the idea that there might be some implication, the idea that you exterminate entire populations of people in order to claim this homeland that needs defending. Well, the problem I have with your position on Native Americans, and I, I will tell you this, is that you've been found to be a dishonest broker. Uh, repeatedly, really? you have, uh, and I don't know anything about you, Professor. I've just researched you, and what I have found is that you've been accused of grossly overstating, and in some case cases, inventing these atrocities of which you speak. And I'll give the viewers the examples. Uh, first of all. This is the inve investigative committee that came after you at the University of Colorado Boulder. The investigative committee came out and said, quote, Churchill has created myths under the banner of academic scholarship. They found a, quote, pattern of deliberate academic misconduct involving falsification and fabrication, specifically with respect to your claims about the Native Americans. Go ahead. Well, it might be of interest to you to know that that committee on the basis of that report and their mustering of so-called factual data were found to have been engaged in myth-making the first degree, guilty of everything they accused me of to the extent that they had to be immunized 
from the consequences of their action by the administration of the University of Colorado. And that a panel of scholars, the University of Colorado, went through point by point in exhaustive detail and produced a report for the AAUP, which is posted online for Journal of Academic Freedom, that found that there was no validity to any of the findings of that investigative report. Right. Plus, there is a jury at, in Denver, Colorado, mm -hmm. which concluded, having been told repeatedly, that me having been actually guilty of any of the offenses that are delineated in the investigative report, any one would have been sufficient grounds for firing, and the jury determined that they had no grounds for firing on that basis the at all. The jury believed, just so the viewers understand, the jury believed that the university was using your alleged academic misconduct as a, a ruse to fire you for your comments about 9-11. That's what the jury concluded. They did not say that the conclusions about your academic misconduct what were said. fair or unfair. That's the truth. Hold on, because there's a second point, and that is it wasn't just the investigative committee, as you know. Several historians have come out and said, you've misrepresented the facts. A UCLA professor who is a member of the Cherokee Nation and two others refuted your assertions, assertions that were based on their works. They called it, quote, an out-and-out out fabrication that, that, the, that, that the Westerners infected the, uh, the, the Indians with smallpox based on giving them all these blankets. You claim up to 400,000 Native Americans were killed. They said, quote, it's just the making up of data and it shouldn't be tolerated in science. Number two, Professor Thomas Brown of Lamar University, quote, every aspect of Churchill's tale is fabricated. Churchill has fabricated incidents that never occurred and individuals who never existed. He falsified the sources that he cited in support of his tale and repeatedly concealed evidence in his possession that disconfirms his version of events. These are the guys on whose work your claims were based. And third, Cherokee sociologist Russell Thornton wrote to the LA Times and to Inside Higher Ed, the history is bad enough, there's no need to embellish it. He thinks you were inflating the numbers unfairly. He went on to say, he blatantly misrepresented me. It was totally inappropriate. I'm his source for this allegation, and it's wrong. It's academic fraud sustained over several essays. So they're all lying about Ward Churchill. You probably should know what you're talking about before you talk national TV, I, Megan. I, once again, I don't know what Number I'm talking about. Number one, the Cherokee. I'm glad I have you here to explain it to me. Yeah, that's no Thomas conclusions. Brown, and Thomas Brown was fired from Lamar University. He hasn't been a, a professor in the And you were fired, Lamar. too, for academic misconduct, Thomas sir. Brown it's was tough to claim that we're well, all high ground. You, if you're going to suggest that that discredits me, you should be accepting that that's discrediting Thomas Brown, who's now working out of an abandoned grocery store in San Antonio. The so same. what can I tell you? A lot of people tell lies about you. A lot of them. Long list. Yeah. I got to, uh, <laughs> I have to say that there's probably a lot of people who tell lies about you out there, too. Well, okay. Um, or at least what you would view as lies, but they don't tend to get parsed by academic committees, and there's... A rather large number. You've been. You've that can been, be cited. What the earlier part of our exchange with Ward Churchill proves is that the professor has a tendency to play fast and loose with the facts. What this next segment proves is that he makes them up entirely, especially when it comes to the subject of 9 11. Your justification, you're one of the many you've offered for the reason the, the terrorists have the right to bomb the World Trade Center. You've said repeatedly it's because the CIA had offices there, and that made it fair game for a military strike, for a, tr a strike by terrorists. According to Pentagon rules, I don't think that's true, and I've made this point repeatedly in things I've written, too. That's not true in international law, but the Pentagon invokes that continuously. Okay, but you, you realize that, that those CIA offices, A, were covert and were not known by anybody prior to the actual bombing, and B, those offices were in World Trade Center 7. That was not attacked by the terrorists. It fell down due to burning debris. Well, we are parsing again. I don't know parsing. what they knew I and what they didn't an know. I didn't even truth. know who they were. So what your inroads are into the intelligence apparatus of Al-Qaeda. Do you know better than I? No, but I don't know that they didn't know. And I think perhaps this is at least as precise as U.S. precision bombing. They didn't hit World Trade Center 7. Even if they knew, let's assume your, your invented story about them knowing. Somehow they knew, but nobody else did. 
That's they not didn't been a story. World, I said I don't know. But they didn't hit World Trade Center 7, sir, so it makes no sense. You offer, the point I'm making is you offer these assertions. You offer them as fact. You have young college uh, students who for many years believed this stuff. And it's only when you're held to account that people start to see you don't know what you're talking about on a lot of these issues. I know exactly what I'm talking about. I know that that was at least as precise as U.S. precision bombing. That's a dodge. You claimed they targeted it. No, that's it. a fact is no. what that happens you to be. You claimed they targeted it because the CIA was there and that made it fair game. A, there's no evidence they knew that the CIA was in there. In fact, the evidence is to the contrary that no one knew. And B, they didn't target World Trade Center 7. They got the first and the second towers. That, that tower came down afterward thanks to debris. That perhaps is the way they got at it. It is at least as accurate as U.S. precision bombing, where the bombs fell quite often as much as three miles from the okay. designated target. Are you writing a textbook? I hope so. Are you in the process? I'm always writing, whether it turns out to be a textbook or not. But a textbook? I mean, is there a university that is still in the market for Ward Churchill's thoughts? There's universities all over the country that are in the market for Ward Churchill's thoughts. Via text? As, a, as an instruction manual for students? Assigned readings count as text, I would suppose. I've not written a textbook per se. Don't know that I will. Think that I might at some point in any case. Is it true that you believe we may get more attacks that resemble the 9-11 attacks and we deserve them? Well, given my experience in misery in airports ever since 9-11, I would assume that I'm not the only one that thinks we might get more attacks. And that we deserve them? You keep doing what you're doing, you're probably going to get responded to in kind. There's a sort of a symmetry to it. I don't know. There's a fair amount of damage inflicted, collateral damage inflicted by drone attacks. Now, that's a little easier to put under the radar. People don't tend to hear about that here, but people tend to hear about it in areas where the drone attacks are occurring, and they're occurring in fairly high degree of frequency, and the toll is pretty high, and I would imagine that's upsetting people, don't you? Do you believe the United States ought to be bombed? I think the United States, by its own rules, is subject to being bombed. You can't answer the question. Yeah, yes. I have answered the question. I yes think or the no. United States yes or should no. comply with law. To be bombed? If it does not comply with law, it opens itself up to it, bombing that is. It opens itself up why, to why having done to it everything it does to anyone just else. Just answer honestly yes or no. Do we deserve to be bombed? Just say it if you think it's true. I say that if you open yourself up under rule of law for reciprocation in kind, it's quite likely going to happen. I will say that at that point, no more than a murderer who's convicted and punished. You have no complaint. That's what I say.